All Manchester United fans are aware that right now we need a new centre-back at the club. Jose Mourinho tried to sign Harry Maguire from Leicester City in the summer and Toby Alderweireld from Spurs, but the club blocked moves for both of them. So coming up to the January transfer window, United are obviously going to be linked with a lot of centre-backs. And there's three centre-backs in particular that we are getting linked with. We're getting linked with Inter Milan's Milan Skriniar. We're getting linked to Fiorentina's Nikola Milinkovic and Sampdoria's Joachim Anderson. So who better to talk to than Francesco Porzio from the One Football Newsroom? He's, gonna, he's, he's Italian, watches Serie A. He's an Inter Milan fan as well, so he knows plenty about Milan Scrinia. So thank you very much for your time today, Francesco, for joining me. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about Milan Scrinia now. For those who don't know, he's a 23-year-old Inter Milan Slovakian international. He was bought by Sampdoria in 2016 after four years with Zilna in Slovakia before Inter Milan snapped him up. And he went on to make more than 35 appearances in his debut year for Inter Milan and plenty of noise is going out around him. Why is he such a good player? Why is there so much noise around Skriniar right now, Francesco? For me, it's a surprise. That's why everyone is talking about him. Because when he arrived at Inter, he wasn't that known. I mean, we knew that he was a good player because everyone was talking that he was a good potential player. But he arrived at Inter, he was amazing the first season. He played every single minute of Serie A last season and also the beginning of this one, the impact that he had also in Champions League games. It's very surprising and uh, let's not forget that he's, he was born in 1995, so he's only 23. And the potential he has is very, very, very promising, I have to say. Well, if, you, if you look at Manchester United, the thing that we don't have right now in defence is, is a defensive leader. You know, what sort of, what sort of style of defender is is he, is he aggressive? Does he sit back? Is he more controlled? What sort of style of play does he have? He's definitely a leader, uh, also psychologically, let's say. But uh, technically, he's the defender that always tries to anticipate the striker. And that's 90% of the cases, if he thinks so, he's better than others. So the problem is that when he, for example, played against Luis Suarez in Champions League against Barcelona, is that there is that... 10% of the times that he doesn't arrive to the ball before. And that's where he has to improve. But for sure, Milan Skriniar is one that he has leadership, he has potential, as I said, and that technically I think he could have a great impact on the Premier League and the style that you play in the Premier League. Now, what would you say uh, his strengths and weaknesses as a player? You say that that 10% that, that there that he doesn't get to the ball first might be one of his weaknesses, but what would you say is his biggest strength as, as a centre-back? I would say definitely the the timing. He knows where is the striker. He knows where is the ball. He he has good like vision of the of the game. He also has to improve like um, when he has the ball. Like sometimes he's too slow. He doesn't do the right choice. But really, uh, his strength is the the way he understands football before other players. And that's for me, it's amazing for a defender. Now, obviously, Inter Milan have had a. a... A struggling few years in Serie A, to say the least, but you seem to have got a good set of players there now. Is there any chance that Skriniar would want to leave and that Inter Milan would want to sell him? You've paid, I think, around about €34 million Euros for him when you signed him. How much would Skriniar cost and, and do you actually need to sell him? OK, let me say two or three things here, because financially Inter will end uh, the financial fair play in June. So Inter, up until this summer, uh, they are still under the financial fair play, so they are still have some problems. But after that, Inter will, doesn't have to sell, like financially. That's one thing. Also, Milan Skriniar always said that he loves Inter, he loves the club, he loves the city, so he doesn't really want to leave. But, you know, transfer market, you know, better than me that anything can happen. I would say that for Skriniar right now, you need at least 70, 80 millions to, to, to buy him. Uh, it's a lot, but we saw all the numbers that are going around, especially for defenders, and for sure he's worth that money. Let me say only one last thing about him is that Inter will have a new general manager starting next week, which is uh, Beppe Marotta. He was the one who used to be in uh, Juventus until last year. And that's very important to me because the strategy for, until now of Inter was to keep the good players and selling maybe the ones that... Uh, didn't show much potential. I'm thinking about Kovacic as an example. Um, with Marotta, this can change. Think about all the players that left Juventus in the last years. And Juventus always improved buying new players. And this 
I think can change the strategies of Inter the next summer, for example. So I'm not saying that Skriniar will stay 100% of Inter. I know that if Manchester United, for example, will make an offer for him, Inter will think about it. And uh, it's not the time that Inter that, um, doesn't even uh, want to discuss, you know, the, um, the players. If they offer 70, 80 millions, go for it. Welcome to you, Manchester. Yeah, I mean, you know, 70, 80 million, whether it's 120 million, Man United need a centre-back leader. Sure. And we've seen the impact that, that Van Dijk has had at Liverpool, and that was 70 million. Everyone thought it was overpriced, but it's made the world of difference to what was a leaky Liverpool defence, and United certainly need that. But another centre-back that we have been linked with is Serbian international Nikola Milinkovic, 21-year-old who plays for Fiorentina. And he started every game for Fiorentina again this season, played for Serbia at the World Cup as well. And there's lots of noise about him as well. What can you tell us about Milinkovic in, in terms of, say you, Skriniar is, you say he's got a leadership type of attitude. Does Milinkovic have that same type of approach as a style of player? Okay, um, they're very different players. Um, I will say that the main um, strength of Milenkovic is that uh, he also can play as a right back, and that's uh, an advantage for, for for Fiorentina, for example. Also, if you want to play with three defenders back, he can do different roles, you know what I mean? So he's more uh, flexible than Skriniar. Skriniar, for example, tried to play as a right back as, against Tottenham, uh, last month, and it was a disaster. So uh, we know where Skriniar has to play, while Milenkovic is also very young, so he can change role during the years uh, coming. And um, I think another quality that he has is that he's very good also um, shooting and as a playmaker. Like, he's the first one who starts the, the ball running, you know what I mean? When Fiorentina starts to play, and he can decide where the ball goes. So he, he's also like more um, midfield, you know. He's a midfield that plays in defense. And that's, you know, the future of football, I think, is going this way. You know, you need defenders that know how to to play properly, you know. They're not like in the 80s. <laughs> it's, it's different now. <laughs> no, that's true. And that's something that United desperately need as well because Manchester United don't have a centre-back at the moment who is capable of playing out from the back with the ball. So what we tend to do is skip the defence and try and knock it long over towards Popper or further up the field towards Lukaku. So Milinkovic having that ability to play out from the back with the ball is something that certainly could improve this United team. But, you know, you say that's probably his biggest strength is his ball playing. What would you say are the weaknesses of Milinkovic? Um, the weakness for me is that he needs more experience. Um, you know, that was his first year that he actually played. Last year he was uh, he was not playing that much, and also uh, he started to play tragically after the death of uh, Fiorentina captain Astori. Um, and after that, he you know Fiorentina now has a new uh, after this tragical loss, uh, they have this new attitude that is very um, very nice to see. Actually, you know they play for someone else; that it's not playing anymore for them, and that's very. Very nice. And also Milenkovic, uh, he's one of the key players of this, this Fiorentina, which is one of the youngest team in Europe. Let's not forget about that. And he's an experience right now. I think that he will need, like, it's too early now moving to Manchester United for me. He needs at least one, two years more of, you know, um, working on his, on his qualities, working on his weaknesses, and then he can, he can make the step. I think Skriniar now is ready to do that. Milenkovic needs one, two years more, even maybe another Italian club and then go into Premier League. You know what I mean? Because now he's only 21. So if he goes there and he fails, I'm not saying that his career will end, but more or less. <laughs> yeah, it would be tough, I suppose, coming over as a 21-year-old. As a centre-back, you're expected to be a leader, to have that quality straight away. So maybe... It would be too early for him, but as you say, Skriniar, you feel, is ready. Uh, but what about Joachim Anderson? Now, he's the third centre-back from Serie A that we're getting linked with, played for Sampdoria. Now, he has had a slightly different career path in that he went to Holland when he was only 17 and spent four years with FC Twente before he then moved to Sampdoria in 2017. Now, having looked at a little bit of 
Anderson, he looks like a far more ball-playing centre-back. A little bit like you saying there, Milinkovic likes to play out from the back with the ball. Is that the same case with Anderson, or is he more of an aggressive defender like Skriniar? It reminds me a lot of the first Skriniar that played in Sampdoria. Uh, also for the uh, mistakes Skriniar made at first. Uh, Skriniar, I remember when he arrived in Italy, he made huge mistakes the first month. And Giampaolo, who is still the coach of Sampdoria, always said, don't worry, he will be great. He's the best defender I have. And now he's doing the same with Anderson. He's the very play, he's the player that he counts. And then there is uh, to, uh, Colley and uh, Tonelli, the other defender. But Anderson is playing every game. And for example, they played the um, Sampdoria, um, Sampdoria Genoa derby, the derby of Genoa this weekend. And Anderson was a disaster because the penalty, the Piontek scores, it was his fault. But this doesn't mean that he's not a good player. I mean, he, like Milenkovic, he needs experience. In Serie A, it's very difficult for defenders, I think. So he needs to play more games. He needs to um, make other mistakes, sadly, or make other great performances. And uh, But as I said, he reminded me a lot the first Milan screener. Um, he's very aggressive. He wants to arrive before other players. And uh, that's, in many cases, it's a good thing, but sometimes you make mistakes. That's normal, I think. And uh, so, 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 so you would say that's more towards his weaknesses is, again, this same thing you're saying about Milinkovic, more to do with the inexperience than anything, that maybe he would need another year or two in Serie A before making a step up to a club like Manchester United. Listen, I, I value a lot the um, mental uh, qualities <laughs> as much as the technical qualities. I think they are very, very important, both of them. Sometimes we think that if you make great games, you can play everywhere. That's not the case. Um, Sampdoria is a small team right now in Italy, small, medium team. So going to Manchester United, it's a big step. It's a big step that other players with more experience than Anderson or Milenkovic didn't prove that there was a step necessary at that time. So you need time, you need experience, you need to play, you need to make mistakes. But for sure, we are talking about three incredible players that will be, we will be talking about them in the next 10 years. I'm sure about this. But, you know, going to Manchester United, also I'm thinking about Manchester United now. Which strategy United want to uh, point? Uh, do you want a defender that you spend like, Whole, uh, 100 million and you're sure that he's going to do great or you want a potential good defender like Milenkovic who you pay maybe 30, 40 million and then in two, three years he can be a top player for that team. You know what I mean? It's a choice that United has to make and I don't know if right now the top priority is this or who will be the next manager. That You tell me. <laughs> I don't know about well, this. Well, no one really knows what's going on with the manager at the moment. But in terms of looking at the squad, I think centre-back is a clear weakness. But, you know, at, at, what you've made your point clear there. But out of the three for Skriniar, Milinkovic and Anderson, who would you think is the defender that United should be looking at if we are going to look at any of them? If I were the sporting director or the general manager, I know you guys don't have the uh, sporting directors in uh, United, if, if, even if uh, United actually wanted one. Uh, I will go straight to Milenkovic, honestly, because I think he's the one that has more potential. I think Skriniar, we, for sure he can improve, but uh, you pay a lot for him right now. And I think if I were a general manager or a sporting director, I would split that money also for other roles. I mean, I wouldn't spend, considering also the situation of United right now, I wouldn't spend that money for one player in defense. Even if that's, that's a surprise. I thought you were going to say Skriniar. You say Milinkovic. I know because they want to keep Skriniar in Inter. <laughs> oh, there we go. I no, see what you're I doing think, there. Very, very smart. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I think that Milenkovic, uh, the price you will pay right now, it's very, very low considering the potential he has. Uh, Fiorentina is also a team that is willing to sell players historically. They will not like uh, stay and keep him if he doesn't want. So um, going right now to Inter is tough, tougher than going to Fiorentina. So I think Milenkovic will be a great choice for United. But for sure, the first priority, the top priority is be decide the manager because that changes everything. Because I know that Mourinho, we know Mourinho in Serie A. Mourinho will go for screener straight away. <laughs> Pay for that. That's it. 
Yeah, that is very, very true. But we, we don't know what's going on with Mourinho right now, as I said before. But, you know, thanks for your time today, Francesco, and hopefully sure. offering you guys a little bit of insight into Skriniar, into Milinkovic and into Anderson, into terms of what their style of play would be if they came to United, what their strengths and weaknesses and who ultimately would be the best centre-back to go after. If you have watched any of Serie A or any of the three players, let me know what you think about them in the comments below. Once again, thank you very much, Francesco, for your time. Until next time, take it easy.